Lycan is arguably the strongest hero in the game right now, but he's also a fairly difficult hero to play, and much of the difficulty just lies in control. So in this video we're going to talk about how do you actually micro Lycan, how do you get the most out of your wolves in the laning stage, how do you uh, control team fights, how do you control dominator creeps, how do you control your necro units, how do you set up your settings so that uh, you can micro better, what kind of control group setup should you use, all that will be covered in this video. Lessons that cannot be unlearned. Welcome to the Church of Obelis. My name is Jorn. So let's first talk about settings. So there's one setting that I don't use but a lot of people like. That's unified orders with control. So what this does is if you press control, command will automatically send, be, be sent to all units you control. So even though I'm not selecting those wolves, um, they're still now attacking because I told them to uh, with control even though I haven't actually selected them. I personally don't use this uh, setting because sometimes I'm just re reassigning control groups or something like that and then I accidentally send uh, commands to all my units so I have that deactivated. Just uh, do whatever feels comfortable for that option. The next option is center camera on hero on respawn. This should definitely be turned off. What this does is when a hero dies your camera will return, when your hero responds, your camera will return to your hero and you don't want that if you're just currently microing it somewhere else, something like that. You want to have full control of your own camera. So definitely have that one turned off. And then here in the advanced options, we have an option for summoned unit auto attack. By default, this is turned on always and that is not something you want. You don't want your wolves just uh, randomly attacking things. You know, I see I just uh, pulled them to go here and you know, they're just randomly attacking units. I don't want that. Even if you put them on stop, it doesn't help. You actually have to put them on hold ground um, for them to not attack. So, and even then they will attack if something is near them. So definitely not an option you want to have. Unless you're one of those weirdos who likes to play with auto attack on, on the hero as well. But uh, generally just uh, put this on the same as your hero, so for me that's just standard or just use this option. Either way works fine. Now onto hotkeys. So very important hotkeys for Lycan and all sort of some based heroes is select hero, select all controlled units and in advanced hotkeys the select all other units. For me that's on F1, F2, very convenient uh, buttons near where my hands are resting. And then I have the circle flex. I'm using a German keyboard, so for my keyboard, that's the key that's to the left of one. So on a QWERTY keyboard, that would, I think, be tilde. So all these are hotkeys that are close at hand and can easily be used. So what this does is if I um, press F1, I just have my hero. Then I have a, a circle flex for all the other units. And then I can use F2 to have everything selected. So that's a very smooth thing you can do and it's definitely a lot of use cases for that uh, for Lycan. But that by itself is not good enough. You also need to have some control groups. So you have four control groups here and then in advanced hard case you have even more control groups. I'm using six control groups um, and I'm assigning them to the um, one to six numbers. That's just because that's traditional for RTS games. You can also just use any other buttons, uh, just a personal preference. So the way this works is you just um, have select some units um, and then you hit control one for me. And then I have this wolf and this uh, lichen control to, to, to one. So if I just press one now, I will select them. And if I double tap one, I will center my camera on these units. So control groups are absolutely essential for Lycan. And it, the great thing about Dota 2 is that it remembers those control groups. So for example, I'm summoning my Necro for the first time in this uh, demo mode session. And even so, if I had press four, I have these both units selected now. Because the game remembered last time I put these on four. So it always persists between games. It also works with dominant units. 
So I've been getting a lot of questions in some other videos on how to spawn creeps in the demo mode. The way this works is you use cheats. So for example, if I want to uh, create a centaur, I type in create hero, and then I have to use the uh, particular code for the centaur, or at least a, a string that's long enough to identify it as a unique unit. So for the centaur conqueror, that's uh, centaur underscore K, because it's, it's the name is Centaur Khan, something like that, internal name. Then I want it to be a neutral unit, so I put neutral at the end. And um, I'm going to put in the description a list where the unit names of all the units are, are going to be found, so you can use that in your own uh, demo mode. So now I can just uh, um, convert this, and because I've previously saved my dominant creep to 3, I can just press 3, and then I have the Centaur selected. So here's my personal hockey setup for Lycan, and this is just my personal setup. Doesn't mean that it's the best setup or that uh, everyone has to use this, but it's a setup that's uh, comfortable for me. And uh, if you don't have a, a setup uh, currently, why not just try this out and uh, see how you like it? So what I have is I have one as a dynamic group. One is the current army that I'm moving around with. And oftentimes I'm going to have some other units uh, sent off somewhere else. I don't know, I have, maybe I have my Necros uh, sent off somewhere else, uh, push out this creep wave or something like that. And then I have my other units that I'm moving around with currently at 1. And then I have on 2 a control group that's just the wolves. And 3 is my dominant creep. 4 is both of my Necro units. So this will always have the Necro Archer as uh, selected by default. And this allows you to easily use your purge ability. And it also has the uh, Necro Warrior in there so that I can use these two units to uh, move around separately, push out camps, uh, look for wards or whatever, or um, do general camps. And then on five, I have an individual wolf and then six another one so that I can more easily scout with these wolves. As scouting with wolves, something you want to do uh, right at the start of the game, and then later on, uh, sometimes you want to uh, uh, use those wolves for scouting rather than for, for farming, because there are situations where that scouting information is a lot more valuable than the extra DPS that these wolves would um, have for farming. And that just gets a lot easier if you have extra control groups rather than just having to like manually select those and uh, um, having to send them off. And just having control groups for these just makes everything a lot easier. So at the start of the game as uh, Lycan, you have no time to waste. You want to immediately summon wolves and send them out for scouting. This is an Atezi replay, it's going to send those wolves out, and the reason you want to send them out is you want to know what the enemy lanes are, and also you want to scout for uh, wards typically in the mid lane. So he's going to move this uh, wolf here, sees the wolf is not being shot at. If there was a ward here, for example, the wolf would be shot at, but since it's not, he knows there's no ward here in this area. And then he's going to immediately resummon his wolves at around 40 seconds before the horn and move out. And now you can either fight with the, for, the, for the runes with both wolves or you can send one wolf out separately to go and deny the runes. So that's what Adhesus is going to do in this game here. He's going to lose uh, this rune here, but he will deny this rune and in the end they will end up with a 2 for 1 rune split for a 40 gold advantage. Lycan's base damage is pretty mediocre, about 50 base damage, that's for melee hero that's not that great, but he also has these wolves that each give 26 uh, damage, so on the whole he's going to have more than 100 base damage uh, if you combine all these units together, so he's one of the best class hitters in the game as long as his wolves are alive, so definitely those wolves really important to uh, keep up your farm in the lane and to, to allow you not to miss last hits. And these wolves of course give some golden experience when they die, but it's not that much. Level 1 wolves give about uh, half the gold and a third of the experience of a melee creep, so losing them is not a terribly big deal. Of course you don't want to waste them, you don't want to feed them, but uh, if you have some important use for them, uh, you can definitely uh, sacrifice them for some last hits or you can also use them to block your ally. So the early game Lycan is not the strongest laner, but he can definitely trade reasonably well if the enemy runs up to him. The problem is just uh, he's rather slow and the enemy can just always disengage from him. 
but one thing you can do is you can try to body block with your wolves. This is not very easy, but if you can pull it off, it's definitely very strong. The way this works is just you right click the enemy with the hero and one wolf and then just run past with the other wolf and try to block them. And wolves are pretty small in terms of the collision size, so it's not easy, but uh, can definitely be a strong technique. And once you have level 5 wolves, they gain the cripple ability, which greatly reduces attack speed and also does some minor damage. So if you just right click both wolves on an enemy, he's going to be almost permanently crippled and uh, can't really contest you, he can't really trade against you, and he's going to have a hard time last sitting. So when you hit level 6, uh, you typically also run the time have your Dominator or your Necro 1 up. So if you have Necro, you want to wait for uh, the, the item to actually be up. And if you Dominate, you want to wait for a decent creep. And then it's time to look for a fight. And you see 33 doing that right now. You see it's a good fight now, it's going to transform and then run people down. You want to primarily run down the ranged supports that have no escape mechanism like this Rubik. And then he's going to try for this Wind Ranger, but Wind Ranger, of course, has a wind run, so she can just run away. And so he doesn't chase her. You don't want to chase too deep. And then he just transitions this uh, kill into a tower push. He's going to get this uh, T1 tower. Also, notice how he's saving his melee necro unit here. You want to shuffle around the tower aggro on those units by just A clicking something else. So he claims the tower and gets a nice advantage for his team. If your first item is Dominator, your level 6 time is going to be even stronger, at least uh, assuming you get a decent creep like a Sento, Helber Smasher or the Alpha Wolf. And so we can see here Sila in this clip is going to run in here, get a really good stomp off on two heroes and he's going to try to get that kill on that Ursa. Ursa jumps to the high ground, doesn't quite know where they jumped on the high ground or past, but he's going to bring in this courier here to get some scouting and sees the Ursa is indeed still up there, so they're going to go and kill him too. So that's uh, two very nice kills and that is definitely what you want to see as Lycan when you hit level 6. When you hold this down, you want to be jungling or pushing out waves, you want to be farming. So in this clip you see Ateezy here doing some nice stacking with that uh, ranged necro unit. And you can just jungle really really quickly with necro. And that's one of the things that makes uh, Lycan so strong in this patch. The life cycle of Lycan is always the same. You search for a fight when you have your ultimate. If you win that fight, you take an objective if possible. And after that, either way, you go back to farming until your ultimate is back up. And you just rinse and repeat, doing that over and over again. So in general, you want to avoid fighting when you don't have your ultimate, but there are some situations where you can definitely still fight even if you don't have an ultimate. So Lycan still does quite a lot of damage, even without ultimate. The ultimate is primarily for mobility, it's primarily don't, to not get kited. You get some bonus damage with the crits, but mostly it's about the movement speed. So if you have some hero that can disable the enemy, you can still definitely fight, you can still take kills even without ultimate. During your ultimate you want to go hard, you want to go in there, get some kills and then if the fight isn't uh, looking so good anymore, you want to get out. So here in this fight, Sila gets a lot of kills here, uh, three people dead and now he's just chasing. And this is an Ember he's chasing, Ember is not exactly easy to catch, so if you don't get a stomp off here, you just, you just can't get this kill. But he just keeps chasing here and that's incredibly stupid. Like this is not going to work, like even if you get this kill this is never worth it. It's just uh, just retreat. As soon as the ultimate starts to run out, you need to get out. And just because you use the ultimate doesn't mean you have to commit. You can just run away if you have used the ultimate. Doing that sort of means you admit you have made a mistake by using ultimate, but it's better to just cut your losses rather than you know throwing bad money after good. It's kind of the sunk cost fallacy. Just because You've made a mistake by using the ultimate, doesn't mean you get to continue fighting that. That would just make the mistake even worse. So in this clip, uh, Artesia is like and just realizes that's not a good fight. So he just gets out of there. He just accepts, okay, Shakira dies and I've wasted my ultimate. That sucks, but it's better than just uh, running in there desperately and uh, trying to make this uh, losing fight work. And it's never going to. And you need to be smart about using your ultimate. So in this clip here, Sila is going to use his ultimate, he's going to go in there and he's going to get a kill on that Lina. Eventually, 
misses the stomp and so on, but he's gonna run her down and now he just gets out. There's no way he can kill this Ember here, so he's gonna run over there to the mid lane where there's a hero there. He's gonna take over a creep here that says purge. So he's gonna purge this monkey king and he's gonna actually purge off his uh, jingo stacks and this way the monkey has no chance of actually getting the kill on that wind ranger and Sila is gonna claim that kill and you see jingo mask with three stacks here gets pushed off and monkey king dies so this is like a just very smart readjustment here from Sila. Lycan is a very efficient farmer especially with macro but if you have a stacked ancient camp with those prowlers can be kind of tough so in this clip ATZ is going to lure the creeps out a little bit here trying to get the um, big prowler to just uh, use his uh, stomp ability on one wolf this way not all of, all of his units get their armor cut in half and this way he can do this camp with minimal losses one of the strengths of Lycan is that he can do split pushing so in this clip you're going to see ATZ is going to push the bottom lane, he's far away from his, his team, so this is too risky to continue here. He's gonna push with his uh, wolves and his necro units while he TPs to the top lane and pushes that out, which is pretty safe. And he's not gonna hit that tier 3 tower because any, someone is gonna have to defend it anyway, so instead he's gonna use those units to do some jungle camps here. While there's some fighting in the top lane going on, he's just gonna take these jungle camps and uh, get some extra gold from that. Even if you're dead as Lycan, your uh, work is never done, so here Atiza is going to use this uh, ranged necro to uh, stack a camp. And then also the runes are coming up, so it's going to use that wolf to deny a bounty rune. And whenever you're dead, you can always find ways to use your remaining units, uh, push out a wave, uh, farm a jungle camp, uh, scout the enemy, do something. So what about the nuts and bolts of controlling Lycan in a fight? Well, if you only have Necro 1 or 2, it's fairly straightforward. You just use your ultimate, right click someone, and then maybe you're going to do some extra control of your hero. So if you don't get blocked so much, you're going to um, you know, do this attack move um, thing where you attack and then move. And doing that with all your units is going to be a bit difficult. So you can just do it with your hero. That uh, helps out uh, a lot. Of course, if you have Necro 3 up, you also want to use your purge ability. And uh, this, of course, slows down the enemy and it's going to make it a little bit easier. But the uh, slow from Purge wears off after a time, so they're only slowed for, for a little bit of time and then the slow gets weaker. So the start is very slow and then he gradually regains speed. If you have a center with a dominator, you generally want to uh, sort of run past people, stomp, and then you can hit them. So uh, if you have a, uh, a tomato creep, the Hellblast Smasher, also a similar story. You also just want to run past people and you want to um, you know, uh, get, get that um, stomp off. And uh, if you have a Doctor Summoner, obviously you want to get your ensnare off to catch up to people. Um, but generally the creeps you want to play around with are the Center Conqueror, the Hellbird Smasher, or the Die Wolf Alpha, which doesn't really require any specific extra micro. The only thing you have to kind of keep in mind for the Die Wolf Alpha is that he has uh, less range than most melee units, so towers and creeps are the one to focus him often, so you have to sort of be careful to keep him alive. And like, in most, like most other heroes, it's just a lot about being comfortable with him. You just need to be comfortable with your control groups. You need to sort of have an instinctive feel of which button corresponds to which units. And that's why it's important to sort of have a proper control group set up instead of just doing things haphazardly. So obviously the best thing to learn micro with Lycan is just to play a bunch of Lycan games and just sort of pay attention to using control groups properly and sort of doing things the proper way. You don't want to be in a situation where you're sort of uncomfortable with the control groups and you're chasing someone and you sort of have to tab around to see, okay, where's my Necro Archer here? Okay, he's here. I'm tabbing to this uh, Centaur. That's just a very inefficient way of controlling things. You want to be using control groups. So that's how you micro Lycan. 
and if you want to have more lighting content there's a lot more coming up on this channel so be sure to subscribe and ring the bell if you haven't already and in the meantime i'm going to leave you with these two lichen videos and obelisk villain i will see you there